Cervical dysplasia is a very common problem. It's kind of a funny name, and it's a little bit difficult to explain, but I'm going to try and do my best so you understand really what's going on if you have cervical dysplasia. First of all, dysplasia is what we look for when we're doing a pap smear. We really don't expect to ever find cervical cancer on a pap smear. It's dysplasia that we're really after because dysplasia is a precancerous change of the cervix uh, that is an early change, and we can treat and make it go away completely and cure you years before dysplasia ever becomes cancer. The good thing about cervical cancer is that you don't one day go from normal cervix to cancer. There's a sort of series of steps that the cervix will change through before it becomes a cancer. And for most people, those, that, those changes can take years and years and years. So there's plenty of time to catch this, treat it, and make it go away before it really becomes a problem. If you had a crystal ball and you had somebody with dysplasia, and you could look at the crystal ball and see that it would never be anything but dysplasia, that that dysplasia would never turn into a cancer, then you would never need to treat it because dysplasia itself doesn't cause any problems. And the issue with dysplasia is a certain percentage of women with dysplasia will go on to develop cervical cancer. So instead of sitting around waiting for cancer, we get rid of the dysplasia before it has a chance to misbehave. Now dysplasia comes in sort of three separate flavors. There's mild dysplasia, moderate dysplasia, and severe dysplasia. There's also another naming system where it's called CIN, um, which is cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. Again, another mouthful, and that's why we use CIN. And that can be CIN1, CIN2, or CIN3. CIN1 is synonymous with mild dysplasia. CIN2 is synonymous with moderate dysplasia. And CIN3 is synonymous with severe dysplasia. And so your doctor may use one name or the other. They really mean the same thing. There's one other word that's thrown around, and that's CIS, which is called carcinoma in situ. CIS is really an extreme form of CIN3, or severe dysplasia. Even though it has carcinoma in the name, carcinoma in situ is not cervical cancer. But it's as close as you can get to cervical cancer without actually having it. Uh, it's still completely treatable, usually with an office procedure. So that's sort of the name of dysplasia. But what is dysplasia? Well, what happens with the cervix is that the cervix is made out of um, two different cell types. There's the squamous cells, and that's sort of the tough cells like what you have on your skin. Um, and then there's the columnar cells. Those are the glandular cells or the, the sort of more fragile cells. And those are found on the inner part of the cervix. And so dysplasia is generally on the squamous cells. And those squamous cells have what's called a basement membrane, which is sort of a, a, sort of a barrier between the deep areas of the, of the skin-like tissue and then the, the, the other tissue underneath. Then above that basement membrane is a layer of active cells that reproduce. And those reproduce and then they die. And as they die, they slowly come up to the surface and then eventually slough off. With dysplasia, we see those cells that are multiplying are actually moving up towards the surface. And so they're not just right against that basal membrane, but they actually go up towards the surface. So on the cervix, if you have cells that are dividing, that go a third of the way up, that's mild dysplasia. Two-thirds of the way up would be moderate dysplasia. And more than two-thirds would be severe dysplasia. If it goes all the way full thickness, that's carcinoma in situ. Now the difference between that and cancer is with cancer, the cells aren't moving up, but the cells penetrate the basement membrane and move down into deeper tissues. And so that's what distinguishes cancer from dysplasia or even carcinoma in situ. And that's why removing the dysplasia cures the problem because that problem is moving up, not down. And so you can always get deep enough to get all those abnormal cells out. Now, CIN1 or mild dysplasia almost always goes away on its own. It's very rare for a CIN1 to really advance into something worse. It can happen, obviously, but it's very rare. And so many times if we diagnose you with CIN1 or mild dysplasia, the recommendation would be not to treat you, but to follow you maybe for six months and relook and see that it's either gone away completely or at least hasn't gotten any worse. CIN2 and CIN3 are sort of considered different diseases than CIN1 and much more dangerous. So whenever we see a CIN2 or a moderate dysplasia or a CIN3 or severe dysplasia, we always recommend treatment. And generally the treatment of choice for that is going to be a leap cone biopsy. Um, the only time we would do uh, something else would be if you had, say, carcinoma in situ and we were really worried that you actually had cervical cancer 
or if you had an early cervical cancer and we wanted to know how deep that cancer was, then a cold knife cone would be the treatment of choice for that. So when you ha if you have dysplasia, it's nothing to panic about. You do not have cancer, but it's nothing to ignore either. And so you want to make sure that you follow up with the treatment. Believe me, the treatment's not that bad, and it should completely cure you. If you ignore this and don't come back in over the course of time, that's when people develop cervical cancer. So if you've got dysplasia, you've got a very mild problem, very easy to take care of, get it taken care of now. If you wait, it can become a nightmare for you, and so you certainly don't want to don't want to wait. Now it's certainly safe to wait a week or two or a month, but you don't want to wait much longer than that, or you're really kind of, um, you know, uh, risking a major problem. Medtwice.com.